Chapter Sixteen: Mental Health Services, Legal and Ethical Issues. This is my summary of Barlow and Duran's Abnormal Psychology Seventh Edition textbook, an integrative approach. To begin with, there are civil commitment laws where it states when a person can be legally declared to have a mental illness and be placed for treatment. Mental illness. Defined legally, is the severe emotional or cognitive disturbances that negatively impact an individual's safety and health. There is dangerousness, which describes people with mental illness as being associated with rates of violence. Also, there's the idea of deinstitutionalization, which is moving people out of mental institutions. There are also trans institutionalization, which is the movement of mentally ill individuals from large psychiatric hospitals to nursing homes or jails, etc., and these provide marginal services. Criminal commitment is the process where people are held because they are accused of committing a crime in a mental health facility. Until they can be assessed as fit to participate in legal proceedings, and have not been found guilty of a crime by reason of insanity. Insanity defense are when mentally ill individuals are not responsible for their behavior, and it would be unfair to punish them. There is also diminished capacity, which is the person's ability to understand the nature of their behavior. And therefore, their criminal intent can be diminished by mental illness.、Uh, this is a mens rea, or mental state, having a guilty mind. The conviction of crime requires mens rea as well as actus rea, or physical act. So, having the intention, let's say, of wanting to hurt someone, as well as carrying it out in. In physicality, in reality, therapeutic jurisprudence is using what we know about behavior to change the criminal, as in what we know about psychology to change the behaviors of people who were who were convicted criminals. Competence to stand trial are when individuals must be able to understand the charges against them, and as a result, are able to assist with their own defense. There is a duty to warn, which is、uh, when mental health professionals have a responsibility to warn the authorities about mental illness, even if they make non-specific threats against non-specific people. This does, however, controversially go against confidentiality、um, and the affirm well and practitioner-patient privilege. There are also expert witnesses, in which individuals who specialize in certain knowledge assist making decisions for judges and jurors. There's a right to treatment, where mentally ill individuals have the right to receive mental treatment for even if they're criminals. There's also a right to research participants, whereby the APA, the American Psychological Association, in 2010 stated that. These individuals have the right to be informed about the purpose of research, privacy, and to be treated with the utmost respect,、uh, protected from physical or mental harm, and choose to participate、uh, in research anonymously and、um, safeguarding their interests or as safeguarding their own health. Finally, there's clinical utility access. Which is the effectiveness of the intervention in practice setting to be applied and efficacy of research, how it outweighs the cost. So ultimately, I talked about the ethical as well as legal ramifications of、um, psychological disorders, psychopathy, and that about concludes the entire textbook. A summary of this entire textbook, whereby I've taken the most important notes and、uh, defined the key terms. I hope you've learned something very valuable from this. And as always, thanks for watching.